Yes. Tonight, I'm speaking on power habits. The power habits of a new man, you want to say? Power habits of a man of God, a minister of the gospel. Power habits of a man called by God, of a man sent by God. Power habits of a true believer, a true Christian. Or a true Christian. Of course, you know what power is. And I suppose you also know what habit is. You know, habit is, when you say something is habitual, something that has become a part of you, you do it from time to time. You do it all the time. You do it all the time. Habit, that's why they use the word formation of habit. Over the years, over time, habit is formed over time or over the years habit is formed so we use the word habit or we use the word form a habit a habit is not imbibed or acquired what becomes a habit doesn't happen in a day not even in a week not not even in in weeks over time over years it continues to build up and then becomes a habit maybe tonight i'll be using case study of some characters in the bible that i admire so much one of them is elisha one of them is our lord jesus christ maybe if i begin from the old testament into the new testament we look at someone like elisha so much respect i have for elisha he operated in the dimension of the supernatural that is very rare elisha operated in the power gifts elisha operated in revelation gifts Elisha operated in utterance gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, if you read from verse 7, the Bible says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. The manifestation of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7. Then it goes on to say, to one is given the gift of of the word of knowledge word of wisdom and the gift of faith then go to verse number eight then to another is given these by the same spirit the sign of spirit prophecy um uh unknown tongues verse eight says to one is given word of wisdom another word of knowledge by the same spirit verse nine says to another is given uh, gifts of healing by the same spirit verse 10 says to another is given gift of the discerning of spirits by the same spirit by the time you read through to verse 12 or so you will see that the gift of the spirit is subdivided into three segments the word of knowledge word of wisdom and the gift of um, the signing of spirits they are classified as revelation gifts the ability the Holy Ghost gives to know, to see to see what is happening spiritually to know what is going on in a case, in a condition in an event, in a family in a place through word of wisdom, word of knowledge or the signing of spirits under that comes vision revelation then another segment is the power gifts we have the power gifts the gift of healings the gifts of healing the gifts of healing the gifts of healing encapsulates different areas of healing there are those who are anointed for the area of, of healing those who have issues 
with internal organs those who are anointed with area of healing those who are blind those who are gifted anointed they pray for those who are deaf and dumb you know the bible calls it the gifts of healings healings as in plural the king james version says plural healings healings different areas then we also have the gift of faith and the gift of the working of miracles gift of special faith not the common faith not the usual faith people who have what we call uncommon faith like paul like elisha he takes the gift of uncommon faith to say to the river jordan to split gift of uncommon faith to follow a man to through river jordan in in second kings chapter number two from verse nine to twelve he followed elisha uh, elijah from gilgal to jordan when they got to the river jordan he knew elijah would be taken away and he knew elijah had the power to open the the, the jordan river but then something must have whispered to him if you cross the river with elijah what about your coming back if you cross the river with elijah river jordan by miracle the river opened up and both of them went something may have suggested or whispered to him say now elijah will be taken away you have to turn back and go back to where you came from who's going to open the river jordan again because shortly after elijah opened the river it closed back after the cross similar to what happened in the red sea but it takes a special kind of faith to embark on such project to embark on such exploit someone say faith we we'll call it it's a gift of faith say gift of faith there are things that you don't dare do unless now we talked we're talking about levels of faith unless god has gifted gifted you with that dimension of operation of faith jesus walked in that dimension the gift of faith so all the people who were operating boat and ship and ferry business they had closed for the night there was no ferry to pay for to cross him to the other side to meet up with his disciples and so he believed god he got up and started to walk on water and everywhere was not hard ground but the path on which jesus was walking the path of the water where jesus was walking was became became solid ground to sustain him just that path every other part remained water do you understand what we're talking about here every other part remains as water that was why while he was still walking the the waves were still were still threatening the waves became boisterous but he was operating the gift of faith he got up and began to walk looking at his destination not looking at the waves because outside of his path it was still ordinary water the normal water but on his path as he looked forward it was like a hard ground water congealed on his path that's gift of special faith gift of special faith that gift was operational in the life of philip the evangelist in acts chapter 8 you see the story in the book of acts chapter 8 philip the evangelist the bible tells us that while philip was on his way out of samaria the spirit of god spoke to him and said join yourself with the chariot of the Ethiopian eunuch the Ethiopian eunuch was leaving jerusalem was going back to ethiopia and he needed to pass through desert there was no sat nav no sat nav no map to follow no google map so ethiopian eunuch was on his path it was just a path they passed and on a chariot going back to ethiopia the spirits whispered to philip go near and speak to him as he got near and began to teach him he said do you understand what you are saying what you are reading the man said how can i 
unless someone explains to me ah uh, philip doesn't have that time because his assignment was just to talk to him about christ but now philip had to expound the scriptures in doing that the utopian eunuch didn't wait his chariot was still moving and philip was talking imagine you and i on a, on a car we're talking and the car moving we're talking the car moving we're talking the car moving they had traveled a long distance into the wilderness completely lost in the in the wilderness it took him one hour two hours or more to explain to the utopian eunuch what the scripture says in isaiah chapter 53 at this time philip was already gone far there was no phone there was no sat nav to help him get his path but you know what as he was teaching and preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch he had faith ever say faith he had faith it's a special gift kind of faith it's not common he had faith that it can't be lost he had faith that the god whose assignment is embarking on has the ability to bring him back to where he came from and of course he came out of the baptism when he baptized him with water and as he came out the next moment he was caught up by the spirit and appeared in azotus don't let me bore you with that we're going somewhere power gifts the gift of the gifts of healings the gift of faith special kind of faith the gift of walking of miracles power gift walking of miracles involves look at the name walking of miracles you walk it out the gift of walking of miracles you walk it out i give an example a blind man came to jesus john chapter number five jesus took the spittle of clay put it on his eyes is that right are you still here put it on his eyes and said go wash in the pool of siloam that's completely different from the man in matthew 8 i believe that jesus brought out of the city and prayed for him you remember the story jesus brought one man out of the city and 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 prayed for him open your eyes can you see he said i see men as trees then he gave him a second touch open your eyes he said now i see men clearly but to another one who was blind he spat on the floor on the ground made a spittle of clay a mud and then put it on his where the eyes are supposed to be that's what we call that's what we call walking of miracles you can see the difference in the first instance he prayed the simple prayer of faith for healing in the second instance he had to walk it out he had to use something to walk it out he's walking of miracles and catches an apron from the body of paul walking of miracles okay jesus was told wine had finished in john chapter 2 the wedding at Cana of galilee he said pour water in the empty pots so they were pouring water something has to be worked out it, it goes with a walking then he said fetch water from it most times walking of miracles or sometimes may not even involve any conventional prayer fetch water and they fetch water and the water turned to wine that's working of what that's working of miracles they said to elisha the ground is cursed beautiful land but nothing comes out blessed is cursed and elisha said give me a cruise of what salt and he went to the fountain of the water he poured the salt in. that's working of miracles you're using something to work out the miracle 
working of miracles many years ago a young boy who had, a, who had an illness an ailment in Ife he was passing urine he was passing blood in form of urine he was passing a bloody urine so the family was concerned they came to a meeting we were doing and then we prayed for others but in his own case we spoke to the sister prayed for him no no we didn't pray for him we prayed for his sister we're talking about the gifts of he, uh, of uh, spiritual gift we prayed for his sister the sister received the baptism of the holy spirit the power of god came on her she went back home and in her she said i i have what it what it takes to pray for my brother so she took a cup of water laid her hands on it and asked god to use that cup of water to heal his brother gave the brother to drink and told him to go he's healed the next moment he went to the toilet the urine was clear it was no longer bloody after that he was completely healed i didn't do the praying this lady was in the meeting we were talking about the gifts of the spirit the power of god came on her she got home prayed over the cup of water gave it to him to drink and that was it walking of miracles so this is the point they're called power gifts then we have the utterance gift the utterance gifts are gifts as the name is utterance gift of prophecy gift of diverse tongues and gift of interpretation of tongues okay let's come back to elisha one of the men i deeply respect in the bible when it comes to power everybody say power say it again say one more time how many of you want to operate in the power gifts how many want to operate in revelation gifts how many want to operate in utterance gift how many want to operate in all the gifts hallelujah as a matter of fact the apostle paul said covet earnestly the best gifts is one of those people that i admire so much who operated in what i'll call the three different uh, um the, the, the three different layers or dimensions of the gifts of the spirit he operated the power gifts he operated the utterance gift paul operated revelation gift i give you examples of where he operated power gifts in acts 14 acts chapter 14 you read his experience in iconium or in iconia or in lystra the bible says he was preaching and there was a young man who listened to paul and the bible says paul looking at him saw that he had faith to be healed he said stand up and walk i expect that the people in the media are you able to view the scriptures can it be projected or the media is on holiday or they are too busy for the online transmission some of the scriptures i'm quoting i expect that you'll be able to show the people because of our time so paul said stand up and the guy got up and he started to walk and the place went wild they called there were two of them barnabas and paul they called them mercury and i think jupiter also they said these are gods they said the gods have come down to ross in the likeness of of men that's power gift in operation combined with the gift of faith then in acts 21 paul was doing a valedictory service he preached for 12 hours one man sat upstairs his name is eutychus and as he listened to paul preaching the man fell asleep and fell from the high loft it was it was a story building he fell and when he came down he died and paul came down embraced him tightly and then left him went upstairs continued preaching you see how many gifts combined there how many gifts 
you can mention one of them what was was one of them gift of gift of faith pastor john he takes faith god forbid you're preaching and there's pandemonium in the car park it says someone has died it takes faith for you to continue preaching true or false it takes faith and then you stop you walked out where is he and then you prayed and he's still lying there and then you returned and told all the ushers everybody get back into the auditorium and you continued your preaching normally it takes the gift of faith true or false most people will close the service call the ambulance seal up the church or the service will become a prayer meeting then you know what he said he said that's okay leave him alone his life is in him he went upstairs and continued preaching and when it was morning the man who died got up and said uh, apostle are you leaving us already and the bible says they were no little comforted so we have there the gift of faith and the gift of working of miracles combined in operation probably gift of healing because if he fell he must have been wounded am i right he must have asked call damage brain damage or whatever he fell bosa so gift of healing gift of faith and working of miracles operated in Acts 27 Paul was on a ship the ship was tossed by Eurocyclone a tropical storm that hit their ship and everybody thought they were going to die and Paul was praying suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to him he saw in a vision and the angel said be not afraid Paul for no harm will come on you and I'll give you, you the life of all those who are sailing with you he saw a vision a revelation of an angel who spoke to him and gave him confidence he came out of that vision and said to the to the pilots and the the captain and the members of the crew he said listen don't go this way do it this way no life will be lost just listen to what i tell you he was operating by revelation they were operating by education the pilots and the crew said no 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 normally you go northwest you reduce the altitude you adjust the speed you look at the cardinal point you use angular vector analysis and then you use the velocity angular velocity which is torque equals uh, a speed times time or speed sorry speed over time so they were doing their calculation and the wind came and paul said you should have listened to me man acts 27 you see there you should have listened to me you are operating by education i'm operating by what revelation he said last night the angel of the lord whose i am and whom i serve said this to me revelation gift in that you see word of wisdom word of wisdom is you you identify a problem and you provide a solution this is what's happening this is what the lord is saying that's word of wisdom word of knowledge is you identify what is going on not necessarily providing a solution word of knowledge there's operation of witchcraft in this environment that's word of knowledge somebody here is going through pains word of knowledge somebody here has a broken uh, somebody here just fought with your spouse and there's crisis at home right now as i'm talking word of knowledge but word of wisdom is somebody here has a problem at home the lord said do this do this do this do that so word of wisdom profess solution word of knowledge identifies a problem the signing of spirits tells you the kind of spirit that is in operation tells you what's going on in the atmosphere who is responsible what is behind what spirit is behind it can i hear amen, amen. paul combined all these gifts revelation power gifts you go check his life are you talking about vision and revelation in the book of second corinthians 12 he said it says lest i should be exalted above measure second corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 lest i should be exalted above measure 
through too much, too much. He said, too much revelation given to me. He said, lest I should be exalted above measure, through too much revelations given to me, God had to send me a thorn in the flesh. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, to keep me humble. He said the revelation was too much. In, in Acts 13, verse 8, 9, and 10, he was speaking to a governor. And as he was preaching to the governor, another guy who was, who was also wearing a collar. He was, he, was, he was wearing suit. He had one looks like Bible. And he too was preaching. And Paul was nodding. Paul too would preach. There was nothing. And then at a point, Paul said, what's going on here? Everything I preach, this man comes against it. Scripture says, Scripture says, and Paul also called, Saul also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, looked at him, revelation, gift in operation. And then he spoke, or trans gift in operation. He said, full of all deceit, utterance, stop perverting the ways of the Lord. And from today, you will no longer see the sun for a season. That's prophetic utterance gift in operation. And it was so. It was so. Now, listen to this. In Acts 16, from verse 16, let's see again revelation gift. But now, the revelation gift dimension is the signing of spirits. A young lady followed him and, and Silas for many days. As they went for prayer, this guy would go for prayer meeting too. They would pray, the girl would pray. And this girl likes to speak in tongues longer than they do. She will prophesy. She will talk and give accurate things. Day one, day two, day three. Week one, week two. One day, the gift of the Spirit in Paul was teared up. In verse, in verse, verse number 18, he says, she did this for many days. She did this for many days. Many days could be one month or several weeks, but they didn't get her. Discerning spirit was not operational. Many days, full stop. Many days. And when they come back from prayer meeting, she will serve them food. She will attend to them. They didn't know anything. But Paul, ever say Paul, greatly annoyed. At that time, discerning of spirits. Everybody said discerning of spirits. The gift of the Son of Spirit was teared up, was provoked. Greatly and not turned and said to the Spirit, Oh, is now you know that is a spirit. But that's the work of the signing of spirits. He said, I command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come out of her. You know the rest of the story. And we can go on, but for time. You see Paul operating all the gifts, all the, dimen the three dimensional uh, spiritual gifts. The power gift, revelation gift, utter utterance gift. The same with Elisha. Then I will now close in a few minutes with their habits. Their what? Their what? Their habits. What are their habits? We'll come into that. This was the Elisha. Huh. Let's look at power in Elisha's life first. Everybody say power. Say it again. Say it one more time. Let's look at power in Elisha's life. Second Kings chapter 5. Second Kings chapter 5. Naaman comes fast forward. I'm fast forwarding. Naaman comes to Elisha. Knocks at his door. Bo -bo 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 Sir, I've been told to come for healing. He brought his certificate, a letter 
of recommendation from his boss, the king of Syria, Ben Haddad. I've been told that you should heal me, otherwise the nation of Israel is in trouble. He said, no worries. You will know there's a prophet. So he came. Elijah said, well, wait a moment. Do I even need to check on this guy? They are so proud. I can't I won't leave my fellowship with God and be coming to um, to attend to this proud guy. So he sent a message to him. He, he didn't move close. He said, go to River Jordan. Wash how many times? Sometimes you come out clean. Where do you classify that? From what we've discussed, where do you classify? What segment of, of the gift of the Spirit do you classify that? Come again. Yeah, number one, the gift of faith. Number two, walking of, walking of miracles. He's saying, you go bath in River Jordan. You go wash in River Jordan. That's walking of miracles. You will come back whole. There are some of these operations, they are intermingled. That could also come under prophetic declaration. Am I right? Go wash in, in the pool of, pool of uh, sorry, River Jordan. He went, he washed. He came clean. He was excited, ran to Elisha. Ah, I must reward. He said, no, 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 go with your reward. I don't need all this. You just go. No, 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 you have to collect this. I said, no. Then he left. You know the rest of the story. We're coming back to the lifetime permits. Gehazi followed after covetousness, greed. He ran after the man, collected the old stuff. Let's fast forward again. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6 from verse number 1. We could even start from verse number 1. Verse number 1. They said to Elisha, the place where we are gathering together with you has become too small. I am praying for someone under the sound of my voice. May God enlarge your coast. Amen. Your amen is not vibrant. I say, may God enlarge your coast. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May you have reason to begin to say, this place has become too small. Amen. May you have reason to say, this business now has become too small. Amen. The place where we are meeting, we are gathered, has become too small. Let us give us permission. Let's let's go to Jordan and let's cut a beam and let's make a place. Let's enlarge. Let's let's build. Let's expand. Let's break. Let's open. I'm not sure if that place was there the last time I came. You you it's been expanded. Am I right? Yeah. My expansion coming. I don't like your amen tonight. Which did, you, which did you prefer to do online from a remote place or that I am here physically? Uh -huh. So respond very well. I said, say amen. Uh -huh, better. So, they went to Jordan and they started. They, they went with, with their major tool. That was an axe. Is that right? Now, watch this. The axe was. Thank you. The axe was. The axe was borrowed. If time permits, I'll come and make reference to that word borrowed. Elisha's ministry at that time was still borrowing axe. The axe was borrowed. The axe they used to build was actually borrowed, it was not theirs. And yet, chapter 5, he had an offer. Everybody say offer. Offer from who? From Naman to accept money. When I did my calculation and extrapolation uh, using the indices, economic indices of their time, comparing it to our own time, and you look at the macro and microeconomics values. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're talking about a figure close to two million or two point something million dollars 
Go and check it out. The talents of gold, shekels of silver, clothes, all kinds of fabric from Damascus. In fact, what captivated my attention was the shekels of gold. Huge kilograms. It was in kilograms. Kilograms. Today, one kilogram of gold, I guess it goes for, I think, somewhere around 50 eight or five hundred eighty thousand us dollars or something one kg of gold so they said man of god take here's a man who knows that as they are going for the new project they have to borrow tools that they will use is that right he borrowed tools there's a man who could who didn't even have a house in second kings chapter four he took a shunammite woman to say my dear my dear husband i pity this man can we make him a place he goes in and out suffering when it comes to a minister here he has to travel back in the night because there's no accommodation for him why don't we give him a place so the stress can reduce so when he finishes ministry, rather than travel all night because he can't pay for accommodation, he can't get a place to stay, he will relax and study and read and refresh. Is this same Elisha that offer came, offer of almost two million dollars, and he turned it down? He turned it down because he was not clean. It was not what? It was a clean money. You read later, I was saying to Gehazi, is, there, is this the time to collect such things? You read in that scripture, 7 Kings chapter 5. Is this a time to collect such things? Not that we don't collect gifts. Not that we don't take honorarium. Not that we don't take offerings from people. But this particular one is a wrong timing. He was in their need. They were borrowing acts. He didn't have accommodation. Was still in that same Second Kings chapter four. If you read down, you will see where he was sharing twenty loaves of bread for one hundred abud men. How many loaves? Twenty loaves of bread. Twenty loaves of barley loaves. Twenty loaves of of barley bread that someone brought in a knapsack in a knapsack. What's a knapsack? Huh? What? Does anybody have a knapsack here? So all the loaves enter the knapsack. So there must be small loaves. And he had to share it among 100 people. It's there. In 2 Kings chapter number 4 from verse 38 to 43. So the ministry were they were really struggling. Am I right? He was really struggling. And that you're gonna see that's one of the habits of power people, people who operate in dimension of power, the shunning and hating covetousness, contentment. I was a contentment. Contentment, contentment, con contentment. I call it I call it the ten C's habits, power habits. Ten C's. One of them is contentment. That was a contentment. Contentment. <laughs> One of them is consecration. Consecration. Elisha was a man of consecration. Focus consecrated set apart one of them is compassion I'll come to that shortly I'm running for time now now watch this so in chapter 6 of 2nd Kings he walked miracles no, in chapter 4 it happened in chapter 4 20 loaves fed how many men how many men? That's an impossible thing. Um, 
naturally speaking. 20 loaves can't go around 100 men and they are filled. The Bible said they ate and they had leftover. So it was multiplying. That's working of miracles. As they were cutting the tree, the axe head fell into the water. Is that right? And sank. And then he cut a stick. Through the stick, the stick went under the water. Sticks float. Iron axe head, usually they should sink. But now the stick sank. Touched the axe head. Iron started to swim. I've seen frogs swim. I've seen fishes swim. But I've, I've seen octopus swim. But I haven't seen iron swimming. And when we say iron swimming, that means the iron sank and the iron started to swim to find its way close to where they will pick it up. You find that second, second Kings chapter number 6, verse 4, 5, and 6. That's working of miracles. Now, Elisha said to the woman, the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings 4, you've been very good to us. What will you want us to do for you? Blah, 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 blah. I'm settled, I'm rich, I'm fine. Okay, what do you want? He said, nothing, I'm okay. Gaza said, she's old and have no child. Elisha said, about this time, next day you will embrace his son. Two things happened there. Now, utterance gift, is that right? That's prophecy. Then, we'll call that also faith, healing, and miracles. You can see the, how these gifts work together. Utterance gift goes into a womb. Healing took place. Rejuvenation of what they call menopause came back. God revived our reproductive system. She had a baby. Listen to this. One day this Elisha was to be arrested. Second King 6 verse 14, 15, 16. The king of Israel said, so king of Syria, he said, who's looking at our secrets? Who's telling the king of Israel every move we make? Which among you? Is it the chief of naval staff? Chief of air staff? Chief of army staff? Is it director of DSS? He called all his security chiefs the inspector general of police he called all of them and said one of you is leaking out our plans to elisha then they said sir no one is leaking your plans there's a dangerous man you find that in verse number 12 13 14 there's a dangerous man his name is elisha everything you discuss in your bedroom he hears every confidential file you say is confidential you are hiding he's seeing them and reading them that's amazing so they said go and get him go and get him so they came with hundreds possibly thousands of soldiers surrounded the whole mountain Gehazi woke up in the morning, no quiet time. And I'm going to show you the opposite of, of power habits. Eli Gehazi was opposite. While Elisha was contented, contentment was, is one of the power habits of those who, who walk in the power gift, those who walk in revelation gift, those who walk in, in the manifestation of the, of the power of God in his fullness. Contentment. Whereas Elisha, sorry, Gehazi was covetous. Covetousness drains God's power. 
Elisha was a contented man, contentment. Gehazi was a covetous man, covetous. Elisha was a man of communion, another C. Communion. Ever say communion? That talks about a fellowship life, a prayer life. Communion. He communes with God. He's always in the presence of God. How did Gehazi know the age of the woman and the man? He says the man is this age, the woman is this age. That even Elisha who was invited to stay in their house does not know much about that family. That tells you the kind of life he lives. He's, Elisha is consistent. Another C. Consistent. He's connected. He has a communion life. He's contented. He's a man of compassion. He's a man of consecration. Controlled conversation. He wasn't a talkative. He lives a quiet life. Controlled, controlled conversation. He wasn't a talkative. Whereas Gehazi was commercial. He was commercial in his doings. He was covetous in his doings. He, he was, his conversation was terrible. Now, in this chapter 6, Gehazi woke up in the morning. The Bible said, and when he had woken up early in the morning, he went out. Everybody say, went out. He went out. Elisha stayed in to pray. He went out. As usual, commercial. He was on his business. He got out. He saw the mountain surrounded by what? By what? By soldiers. He ran back and said, sir, we're finished. They've come to get us. We're finished. Why would you be finished? You, you don't even do quiet time. Early in the morning, boom, out. Say, so keep quiet. They that are with us are more than they that are with them. Faith, gift of faith. He says, sir, I can't see anyone with us. See, that's why you, are, you, you always remain spiritually blind. Because of your lifestyle. Blind. He said, Lord, open the eyes of my servant that he may do what he may see verse 17 18 16 17 18 open the eyes of my servant that he may see and the lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw the mountain surrounded with chariots of fire and after that moment his eyes closed back and he couldn't even say lord lord whatever it would take for me to operate in this dimension don't let my eyes close back again it was temporary. He just said, Lord, open his eyes. And Lord opened his eyes. He said, we'll give you 10 seconds to see. And heaven was waiting for him. We'll give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 5, 4, 3, 2. His eyes closed back. And he didn't cry to say, Lord, no. No. Let me. What, what, are, what have I done wrong that I don't see like my master sees? He left there and went on normal business. He said, the thing are true, I see him by myself. You see they see him, I know they see again. At that time, he pray for me, make I see. They came to Elijah. He said, Lord, smite them with blindness. See that operation. Come, let me take you to who you are looking for. He took them to the, to the house of the king of Israel. The king of Israel said, my, my, my lord Elisha, my, my, my father Elisha, should I smite them? Should I kill them? Elisha said, no. You don't kill prisoners of war. Compassion. What I call it? Compassion. It was this Elisha who stood with a man called Azel. In 2 Kings chapter 8, you see there. I'm rushing for time. 2 Kings chapter 8. He stood before Azel. And he was looking at Azel after he anointed him. No, he hadn't anointed him. Azel came to... to Confirm Second Kings chapter eight came to confirm from Elisha, my my boss Ben Hadad said we should ask you. He's sick. 
He said, will he recover or die? That was the uh, business he came for. Then Elisha looked at him and said, the Lord has shown me that he's going to die. But when you get by, you just tell him all is well. But actually, he's going to die. As Elisha was talking to Hazel, he started seeing the future. May God of heaven upgrade your spiritual life. May you begin to walk in the dimension of the spiritual gifts. May revelation gift be pronounced and dominant in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Somebody shout amen. I'm showing you Paul in the New Testament. I'm showing you Elijah in the Old Testament. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And they are all profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction. And reproof in righteousness. That the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So as he was looking at Azel, have you found it? Second Kings 8. Media, please help us. It's all there. You start from verse number uh, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 to verse 13. You find it there. Okay. So now, he said, the Lord has shown me. No, he was seeing what Azel would do. And Elisha, guess what Elisha started doing? Who knows what Elisha was doing? He started crying. Show us. Um, okay, before you even show us, because this message is interwoven. Very quickly. No, no, no. Go back to verse 9. Compensation. Everybody say compensation. Now, the same Elisha we were talking about, who was borrowing axe head. His ministry was borrowing axe head. He didn't have accommodation. He was staying with a Shunammite woman. The same Elisha that was sharing 20 loaves of bread among 100 prophets that were in his school of ministry. That same Elisha that was managing scarce resources. Now he became an Elisha. Watch this. Watch this. So as I went to meet him and took a present with him of every good thing of Damascus. 40 camel loads. How many camel loads? 40 camel loads. They took it to who? To Elisha. Who sent it to him? ben Hadad the king. You see that I think verse 8 says ben Hadad the king. Take all these presents Go and give Elisha. Somebody shout hallelujah. And then I now read in the scripture where the Bible says, Elisha was sitting in his own house. And the elders were sitting with him. So from borrowed house to having his own house. Contentment. All right, fast forward quickly. I've covered that. So now, this is the point here. Elisha was gazing at him. And the gift of revelation was operational. Elisha began to see the future. Go on, go on. Go on. Verse 11. Then he set his countenance in his tear until he, Hazel, was ashamed. And the man of God started to weep. The man of God started to do what? Started to do what? To weep. Tell me. Was weeping. Was weeping. Now, I did a message. Elijah versus Elisha. You've heard me talk about that. Someone say Elijah versus Elisha. Two different personalities. But I choose Elisha. Are you here? Now, why did I say Elijah was Elisha? What did Elisha tell the king of Israel to do to the prisoners of war? What did he tell them to do to him? You remember? Huh? He said to him, when those army came to Israel, and the king of Israel said, Huh? All this army from Syria. My father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? Elisha said, no. No. Set a buffet for them. Give the contract to Sheraton or Radinson Blue. Give them buffet. First course, second course, 
third course. And the army ate buffet and they were filled. Then he said, what next? Elisha said, send them back to their master. You don't kill those who have already surrendered. Compassion. If it was Elijah, what would happen to those soldiers? If I be a man of God, roast. Somebody said barbecue. <laughs> roast them. And the soldiers will come and say, man of God, the king says come. Ah. If I be a man of God, roast. They became, their children became fatherless. Their wives became widows instantly. Have you seen Elijah setting bread before people to eat? But here's Elisha. He will say, put on the large pot and give all the sons of prophet stew, food that they may eat. Compassion. Why was he weeping here? He was weeping. And Isaiah said, why are you weeping? He said, because I've seen what you will do to the people of Israel. You're going to kill the ch their little children. You kill the women. The pregnant ones, you will even slit their wombs open. Isaiah said, me? How can you say I will do that? Look at the next verse. He said, because the Lord has shown me that you are going to be king. Powerful revelation gift and yet very compassionate. Who is on the keyboard? Play strings for me. Let me conclude here. What are his habits? Let me rearrange it well because it was scattered. What are his habits? I talked about contentment. Did I, call, did I mention contentment? Content. It was Paul who said, Godliness with what? Contentment is a great game. You know the secret of men in their story. It was Paul who said, Having food and raiment, let us there with be content. For Godliness with contentment is a great game. It was Paul who said in Acts 20, and is, is in, I think in, in verse 31, 32 or so, he says, Now, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace who is able to build you and give you inheritance among them that are sanctified. He said, I have not coveted any man's gold nor silver nor apparel. You yourself know that these hands have labored and provided for me. I have not coveted your gold. Contentment. The, the habit of men and women who walk in power one of the cardinal habits, contentment. Everybody say contentment. Contentment. First thing first. Thank you. Contentment. Number two. Consecration. Consecration. Consecrate me now to your service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. May my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, Near our blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding side. Consecration. Consecrate yourself. Consecrate. Number one, contentment. Number two, consecration. Number three is what I call controlled conversation you know why why elisha 
said to Gehazi in 2 Kings chapter 4. You know why he said to him? Listen, you know why he said to him? You know what he said to him? He said, he said to him, he said, listen, take my rod. Go and pray for the woman's child. Is that right? Take my rod. Go pray for her child. I know you. You are talkative. As you are going, don't greet anybody. If anybody greets you, don't answer. Why will Elisha give him that instruction? Because he knows that he's a what? He's a talkative. Is the same Gehazi in 2 Kings chapter 8, verse number 1 and 2. You find him in the king's palace, talking and talking. He said, oh God, which one you can't do for here today? He said, ah, testimony deal. Story, story. The Bible said, and Elisha, Gehazi was in the king's palace talking and he was telling the king and his protocol men all their exploits in different places they've gone to and as he was saying anyway he paid off the Shunammite woman as he was talking about the Shunammite woman's testimony of the resurrection of her son then the woman came in he was always talking how did he know the age of the woman and her husband how did he know they didn't have a child even Elisha that they invited to stay in their house does not know much about them haven't you talked about it that way? Elijah said, Girls, I caught this Shunammite woman. What, what do you think we can, what must be done for her? Madam, do you want me to speak to the king or the chief of army staff on your behalf? The woman said, I'm a comfortable man, woman. So, madam, what? Girls, I said, Ogasa, ask her age. Madam, tell Oga your age. <laughs> oh God, she's shy. This woman, she doesn't have a child. Her husband is old. He's 75. I saw his passport when we were discussing that. Uh, his wife, very old too. She's about 71. Talkative. Be controlled in your conversation. Talk less. Leakages happen through too much talking. I personally, I don't like when you are when you talk too much, you leak power. I'm not talking about preaching the gospel, but you know what I'm talking about. Talk, 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 talk this. Talk, 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 and everybody becomes quiet for you. Continue talking your talk, and you now start tapping there. Ah, hey, bon on you. Can't you hear what I'm saying? Are you still here? they've left you they have other things to do you are you are talking too much so how many have i mentioned three number one is what number two is what number three is what control conversation that's why you see elijah a very quiet man in second kings chapter number two they came to meet him Oh God, let's send someone. The Spirit of God has taken Elijah and dropped him on a mountain. You know what he said? Don't send. Oh God, you know, usually, from my experience of people we see dead on the mountain, we normally see them, sometimes the Spirit of God will take them and fly them and they will drop down and then they are somewhere else and all that you, because we are just telling you because according to uh, the historians and theological understanding this they were talking so much that you know how elisha would respond he would say don't send one word i checked it very quiet man number four concentration the Lord will take away your master from your head today second Kings chapter number 2 verse 1 through to verse 12 he said I know everybody say I know he said hold your peace God is going to take away your master he said I know hold your peace and from Gilgal, they went to Bethel. Hey, the Lord will take away your master from you today. 
I know. Hold your peace. From Bethel, they went to Jericho. A man of concentration. He's focused. If you are the type that people criticize, people would say this about you, and then you turn. You think I didn't hear you? You think I didn't hear you? I heard what you say. I heard what you say about me. And you see, well, if I curse you, shh, you don't need all that. Concentrate. Hmm. Can you see? Can you see what he posted? He's, he's referring to me. Oh, Can you see what he posted? And then you call Brother Jack. Have you seen that post? You see, one Willie, will, I'll deal with Willie, oh, one him. And then you call Brother Johnson. You are distracted. Concentrate. Don't mind them. Concentrate. Oh, that someone told, what's his name? Haman. You remember Haman? They promoted him. They exalted his seat above all other officers. He should enjoy promotion. But one man did not bow to him. His name, Mordecai. Oh, that someone should have told him, concentrate. He turned aside. Are you Mordecai? I heard that you are the only one not bowing. You are the only one. What kind of religion? Nonsense religion. Who are you? Shh, Oga, concentrate. Until he died. There was one guy Solomon told. He said, stay in Jerusalem. I won't kill you. But don't, don't go out. The day you go out, you will die. Agreed? He signed. He said, that's fine. Two years after, two of his house help, they ran to Kutono to go and look for better living. Then they told him, they said, your two house help has left. They went to Kutono to go and look for a better life. He left. He said, Oga, you have an oath that you must not live here. Don't tell me that. I paid so much for them. He went after those two slaves. They told Solomon that the guy has broken the oath. He died. Leave the two slaves. Concentrate. Number five. Abby? Number five was consistent Elisha was consistent you see consistency 2 Kings 2 verse 1 to 12 God has sent only me to Jericho he says as your soul lives and as the Lord lives I won't leave you God has sent only me to Bethel I hear sir as your, the same word go and check he was using the same word consistency Consistent in your prayer life, consistent in the in your fellowship with God, the word consistent in holiness, consistent in integrity, consistent. You must be consistent. Consistency. What number now? Number six. Have I mentioned communion? Communion. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship or communion of the Holy Spirit. Communion. Communion of the Holy Spirit. When you get back home, time is up. I'm running for time now. Second Kings 3, 14 to 17, you see it. Second Kings 3, 14 to 17. You see a man who has a communion life. He was upset. Very upset. Because a, 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 a heathen king came with Jehoshaphat asking for their way out. And Elijah was so upset because that man is an idol worshiper. And he said, if not for Jehoshaphat, I won't even look at you. Go and meet the, the gods of your father and mother. Why are you coming to me? And then Elisha said, give me a minstrel. And the minstrel came and they began to worship. When I read that scripture, I saw his life. He's a worshiper. As they began to worship, the hand of the Lord came on him. You don't need to be told his power habits. You don't need to be told. He said, now I'm not in good form. I've been very angry. 
I'm not in good form. I can't, I can't even give any prophecy. I can't even demonstrate. I can't walk in the dimension of the gift of the Spirit. But you know what? Get me a minstrel. You know what? What's the name of the choir here? Rivers of Joy. Huh? Tehillah. He said, get me the Tehillah group people. And then they started. And they started. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yours. You are God. You from beginning to the end there's no place for argument oh, you are God all by yourself then one hour then two hours the power came while this was going on Elisha was praying in tongues and praying in the Holy Ghost communion with God the hand of God came on him that tells you that is what he does that's his power habits and number what's the last one number what number seven connection what do I mean by connection go and check Elisha's life he had a connection with other prophets other elders Second Kings chapter 6, the last three verses, you see Elisha sitting in his house and the elders were sitting with him. He had connection with other people who are godly, who serve God. Other people who are intimate with God. He, had, he was not a lone ranger. Go check Elijah. Unlike Elijah, Elijah was always alone. That's why he was saying, I alone remain. Who told you you are the only one that God can use? He said, I alone remain. And after I said that, we still saw Micaiah in the Bible. We still saw Micaiah now in the Bible. After Elijah said that in his tenure, we still saw other prophets who prophesied and said to Jehoshaphat and um, said to Ahab that God was going to fight for them. The Syrians said the God of the mount, the, the Israelites can only fight on the mountain, they can't fight in the valley. One prophet went and said, because they have said God can only fight on the mountain he can't fight the valley he said i'm going to deliver them to your hands he wasn't uh, elijah who prophesied that prophecy so there were other prophets but he said i alone who told you alone because he does not connect ever said connect connect you connect you see sons of prophets in his house plenty of them whereas in the days of elijah the only one that was following him he's even telling him go back god has sent only me go back but Elisha connects with others he connects everybody say connects hallelujah are you blessed tonight stand on your feet are you blessed tonight those watching us live transmission are you blessed tonight I pray the hand of God will rest upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. We're about to pray. The power of God is going to come on people. God will rejuvenate your, your habits. You know, what we've shared today, make them a habit. Let it, be, let it form as a habit in your life. You will see the, the dimension of power through your life. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God.